Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we're going to be making the Pixie Kids Cardigan. Now this is a longer cardigan for a child made with the blanket stitch and half double crochets for the sleeves and the border. It's super, super simple. It comes in size small all the way through extra large for a child. Now the length of the cardigan is customizable to the size that you want. The way that I have the pattern written is it will fall right to the knee of the size that you are looking for. Now there is a written pattern available for this uh, cardigan and you will find the link in the description box below. As we work this, we will start at the bottom part of the body, work our way up to where our armholes will start, and then we're going to go ahead and separate splitting the panels into one back and two fronts, and then attaching the arms, and lastly doing the neckline. The yarn that we're going to use for this project today is a Red Heart Super Saver. That's what I'm using. It's just a regular four worsted weight yarn. Now you could use whatever four size yarn that you want. And I will go ahead and scroll up on the screen the approximate amount of yardage you will need for each size. The hook size I'm going to be using for this is a six millimeter hook. You'll also need two stitch markers and a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Go ahead and grab your materials and let's get started. Okay, so to get started, you are going to take a slip knot and you are going to chain the correct amount for the size that you need that's going to be listed right here. All right, I've got my chain. Getting started on row one, this is going to be the right side of your work. What we're gonna do is yarn over and into the second chain from the hook, we're gonna place a half double crochet. And then we're gonna half double crochet into every chain all the way down And that's going to be row one. Go ahead and finish out row one and I'll meet you back here for row two. All right, now I have got my first row of half double crochets complete. This is the right side of your work, so if you want to mark that at somehow, if you won't be able to tell later, then go ahead and do that. Now for row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to do another row of half double crochets all the way down. Go ahead and do your half double crochets all the way down and I'll meet you back to begin row three. Alright, here I am. We've just completed row two and now what we're going to do for row three is chain two and turn our work. Now our chain two will count as a stitch here and throughout the pattern for our repeats. After you chain two, we're going to put two double crochets right into that first stitch. Skipping two stitches and into the third stitch, we're going to put one single crochet and two double crochets all into the same stitch. Skip two stitches, one single crochet and two double crochets all into the same stitch. And that is your repeat for the row. Continue working that all the way down your panel and I'll meet you back so we can get started on row three. I'm sorry, row four. Meet me back, we can get started on row four. All 
Alright, here I am at the end of round three. I've got three stitches left, so I'm going to skip two and then put a single crochet into the last stitch. And that's the end of your third row. Now to get started on row four, this is your repeat row. You're going to chain two, that still counts as a stitch, and we're going to put two double crochets right into that first single crochet. Now we're going to skip both double crochets and working into your single crochet, you are going to single crochet and put two double crochets. Skipping your double crochets, working into your single crochet. Now that's your repeat row. You're going to repeat that over and over and over until you get the length that you desire. And you're going to measure from about two inches below your armpit and then get the length that you want um, for the bottom where it's going to fall. Hers is going to fall right around her knee and she's pretty tall. So do about 20 to 22 inches. That's for a size extra large. For a size large, approximately 18 to 20. For a size medium, approximately 16 to 18, and etc. So go ahead and get to the length that you want, and then we'll start working on separating our panels. I'll give you the counts for each size to separate your panels, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so when we get to the end of our repeat rows, we're going to have this chain two, and that's where we're going to work our last single crochet. Just like that. You're going to work your panel into the length desired to approximately two inches under the armpit and down to whatever length. Okay, so I have completed my panel to approximately uh, 20 inches long, which is going to be um, just above the knee for my daughter. What you do want to keep in mind when you're making this panel is this pattern has stretch to it. So you can pull gently lengthwise and you'll have a better feel for the length that it's going to be as you're wearing it. So if we pull it widthwise, it shortens up a little bit. So make sure you give it that light tug lengthwise because you will have that um, extra pull. And if you make your panel to the length that you desire and then it gives it an extra pull, you might have a couple of extra inches on that. So just a fun note to, to notice when you're making yours. So now what I'm gonna do, this is the body of my panel. I am going to split my panel in three. So I'm gonna have my front side panel here, my back panel, and then my next front side, and then those will fold over. So let me show you with this one. Where I'm splitting my panels is where we're gonna have those arms, and they'll fold over, and that's where we're gonna put our shoulder seam. So if this was opened up all the way, I'm splitting my panel here and working into three separate panels and here. So I'm going to let the numbers scroll on the screen for the amount to count in for your panels. And here's where my front panel will be. I'm going to stick my, my stitch marker right into the single crochet, okay? So each of these groups is three stitches, and then you've got your plus one single crochet here. So this is going to be my, my front panel. Now I'm going to count in the same on the other side. And place my stitch marker. So this will be my back panel and these will be my front panels. So I'm going to work them into working my regular pattern. 
working my regular pattern, I will work just this portion, this one separately, and this one next. Now when you're working your panels into your stitch markers, this is the front of my panel, my last stitch will be in the stitch marker. When you begin your back panel, your first stitch will begin in the same stitch marker. So you'll have one stitch for your front panel and one stitch here for your back panel. So just to notate that when you're working on your panels and I will meet you right back here when I have my length desired for my panels. I will also leave on the screen how many rows to do approximately for the size that you're doing. Now keep in mind, if you're going down a hook size for gauge or up a hook size for gauge, your length might be off. Now if your child is short or tall and they have maybe smaller arms, you just do it up to the size, you know, the top of their shoulder. Okay, when you get to the top of your panels, we're gonna work a row of single crochet. So your back panel is just going to have one single crochet for every stitch across. Your front panels are gonna be a little bit different, so let me show you. We're gonna chain one, and our first and our last stitches, we're gonna decrease by one. So we're gonna go into the first stitch, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, pull up a loop, so we're doing a single crochet, two together, and then we'll single crochet down all the way to the end, and then we'll do a single crochet, two together at the end, and this is just gonna help us with a larger um, opening at the back of our neck for the cardigan. Okay, so here we are at the end. Remember your chain two is counting as a stitch. So our last single crochet two together will be over the last double crochet and the chain two. So now our stitch count should be two stitches less than what we started with. So we're not decreasing the single crochet two together in the back panel, only in the front panels. So go ahead and finish out your panels and I will meet you back here so I can show you how we're gonna join the shoulders. Okay, making sure that you leave a long tail to sew your panels, what you're gonna do is fold over your front panel to your back panel. So of course you'll have two sides and you'll have this opening in the middle. Now if you're doing a large or an extra large, you should have nine stitches open. If you are doing a small or a medium, you'll have seven stitches open. So what I'm going to do is take the long end that I left, go ahead and put that onto my tapestry needle, the whip stitch is my preferred method of um, seaming things up, but if you prefer another method, then feel free to use it. Remember here at the end on our front panels, we did two single crochets together. So we want to make sure that we are not adding an extra stitch at the beginning or the end from those. And with my whip stitch, I'm just going through the top two V's on one side and then straight through the top two V's of the next stitch on the other side. Going back around and doing the same thing. So do that on this panel and then you want to go ahead and do that onto the next panel and I will meet you back and teach you how we're going to create our arms. Okay, so we here's our armhole. Here's where we're going to get started working on our arms. Our top shoulders are now seamed up and we have an opening in the back of the neck. So uh, getting started on our armholes, we're going to start right where our stitch marker was, there at the bottom, where you have two stitches, one for this panel and one for that panel. So 
we'll start in here. We'll take our yarn. And we're going to half double crochet all the way around the arm. Making sure that you're working on the right side of your work. It's pretty much reversible. But when you make your arms, it will be the right side of your work. Okay, so now working up, what we're going to do is we have, let me zoom in for you. We have our single crochet, and we also have our chain twos. So we're going to put one half double crochet into the single crochet. We're going to put one half double crochet into the chain two, the chain that's unworked, and one half double crochet into the chain two space where we worked our single crochet in. So you should have three stitches per two rows. Half double crochet into your single crochet, half double crochet into your chain space, and then half double crochet into the top of the second chain where your single crochet was worked. So you're gonna do that all the way around until you get back to the bottom. And I'll show you how we're gonna begin our decreases on the bottom of the armpit area. Now when you get to the top here, you'll just work one half double crochet into the single crochet and one half double crochet into the single crochet on this side. Okay, so here I am. I've worked my first row of half double crochets all the way around my sleeve. And here is my first half double crochet. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my stitch marker. You're gonna need your stitch marker to be working in, to note where you are doing your decreases. So we are going to do a decrease over the first two stitches so into your first half double crochet, and then without yarning over, going into the second half double crochet, you'll go in and pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook, and then you'll yarn over and pull through all. We'll take our stitch marker and we'll put that right there. So this way, when we come back around, this will be the first stitch that you work into, for the decrease, and then the next one will be the second. So you'll decrease over your stitch marker and the next one. I'll show you that one more time. So let me work around my sleeve and I will meet you back and show you that decrease one more time. And what we'll do is continue working until you have 25 stitches on any of the sizes, and then you will stop decreasing at your 25 stitches. And then just continue with the length of your arm without decreasing any further until you get to the size, uh, your desired length that you want. Okay, here I am. I've worked up to my stitch marker again. And I am going to remove my stitch marker and do my decrease over the stitch that had the stitch marker and the next stitch. Okay, so all sizes are gonna decrease to 25, and then you'll stop decreasing and continue with your length. Once your arms are done, we'll do the border up the front of our panels, behind our neck and down the other side. So go ahead and finish your arms out and I'll meet you back here to get started on, on our border. Okay, so I have completed my arms and to finish out my arms, what I did was just do two single crochets and then a slip stitch to make that step down. Now you can fold your sleeve if it's too long or leave it 
Um, this way my daughter likes hers folded, so I went ahead and did a few extra rows. So I decreased down all the way to 25 stitches, and then I did 15 extra rows of 25 stitches. So depending on the size that you're doing and the arm length of the child that you're making it for, you're gonna do what um, the amount extra that you need. Okay, so this is the right side of our work with the front of your half double crochets facing. Now, when we're working the border, we're doing three rows of half double crochet, um, up the side, around the back, and then down the other side. Now, what we wanna do is make sure that our third row of half double crochet is going to be on the right side. So we are going to turn our work inside out. See how those arms look different. So we'll turn our work inside out. And starting from the bottom, we are going to be making sure we're gonna be working on the wrong side because we're working inside out. We're gonna be working on the wrong side of our work first, so that way um, the right side is facing out, if that makes sense, hopefully it does. And if it doesn't, it's not really that big a deal. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, so we're gonna get our yarn. And we're gonna attach at the first row. Last chain. Okay, chain one, and into the side of your first half double crochet row, you are going to put one half double crochet. And then into your next half double crochet row, you'll put one more half double crochet. And now we're going to be working the same as we did in the arms, making sure that we have one stitch in your single crochets, one stitch in your chain space, and then one stitch in the top of your chain two. Single crochet, your chain space, and the top of your chain two. Single crochet, chain space, top of your chain two. We are not increasing and we are not decreasing for any of these rows. And you're just gonna continue this way all the way to the top of your neck, not decreasing and not increasing. This stitch here is counted as worked already. It's not really a stitch because it's worked into, so you're gonna skip that one. Go around your neckline, come back down. I mean, I don't think you guys really need to watch me doing half double crochets as a border. And when you get to this side, you'll just chain one, turn, and then go back around. And you're gonna do three rows. Well, you can do more if you would like it to be a, a thicker border or a, a thicker edging around the, the, the front of your sweater, but I am going to do three, okay? And then that will complete your work. Thank you everybody for watching Jolie Knots Crochet. If you are not a part of our Jolie Knots Crochet community on Facebook, find us and show us what you've created.